Welcome back to Rayleigh's Small Engines. Old T Bone here talking with you. Got a Honda down inside this uh, trail wagon, four by two. Well, she's a smoker. Let's fire it up and see just how bad. Still runs pretty good. Let's see if I can get my foot up here, sorry. Well, folks, that's called ever since it was brand new, never had an oil change. So I'm going to get this engine out and let's see what we can come up with. I think we can fix it. Yep. Yeah. That was fun. Got him on the winch. All right. So I guess y'all read the description up there. Maybe I'll put something on there. It's a Honda GX 390. And what we've got is a smoking issue. I'll show you guys this. That's the spark plug I just pulled out of that thing. See all that? That tells me that's burning oil. Of course, we know that because we saw the smoke, right? Okay, so the is most likely got ring issues, and it's probably got some. Uh, we're gonna put a new valve stem seal in it. Also, what we're gonna do is get this engine tore down right quick. It won't take but a minute to get in here and see what's going on. I'll leave that hose in. Just a few bolts around. If you're unsure about where this stuff goes, put the screws back in the holes that come out of. And you want to pay attention to your governor spring here. See, it's in the outer hole on this side, and there ain't but one hole on that side. Okay. But just pay attention to stuff like that when you tear these engines apart. Because, take a picture. That's what I do. See, I'm doing it right now. Or Mrs. T is. Mrs. T is filming for us. So, we're going to see if we can get this carburetor intake. All these pieces apart. Really simple, folks. Really simple. Oh, these don't lose them. They come out of this air cleaner spacer thingy kind of dirty careful you don't want to crack your spacer plate there 10 12 and a 14 and you can just about take anything apart on one of these look at there i'm already down in here some of the head that easy the only thing I did before we pulled the engine I did take the muffler off because that was about 30 pounds holy moly but you can see the carbon build up under there and I wonder why it's smoking look right here look at all the oil just laying there let's pull this starter rope a little bit Piston's got some slop. It don't even want to stay up here. So I get it to stay. I can't get the darn thing to stay. Can y'all see it moving there? Mrs. T, can y'all see it moving on camera? Yeah. You can tell the difference how the oil's doing. Okay, well, let's pop a piston out. Take it a little bit further. Like I said, these aren't really too awful bad to do. It's going to take you more time on cleanup than anything. We're going to switch over to a 12. NASCAR, baby. Y'all remember the last video I got a hammer out. I broke something, didn't I? What was it? 
Y'all put it down in the comments. That'll let me know if you saw my last video or not. There should be. Maybe. Maybe it'll come off. Call rust on the crank. There she goes. You reckon this oil? Uh, of course, my fingers are dirty, but you can see it. Ray Charles can see that. Change the oil, folks. Change the oil. All right. Let's flop this out of there. That's your caminator. Better known as a camshaft. Somebody's going to say, oh, they make lifters. Those are tappets. Well, solid lifters are in some cars. So I can call them lifters if I want to. I call a doggone thing of a bob. Hitchy mo stuff. All right, folks. Let's see. I hadn't taken one of these apart before. So I'm learning with you. Looks like I'm going to need a 10 millimeter right there. Pay attention to dipper. Goes down, right? All right. Let me find another socket. And a rat attach it. There. Looks like 10. Yep. Ooh, that's on there. I wasn't going to fall off. Somebody got a ratchet up under here, maybe. Somebody probably got a bit easier way to do these. Well, this is my first one of these. Well, does this slide out? Look at there. Hope I better figure out how that goes back. I'm guessing that's a counterbalancer. Let me get a deep wall tin. Tell you a good place you can go look. Um, you can go into uh, manuals lib. A lot of good info in there. I don't claim to know everything, so I'll uh, I have to look stuff up all the time, or I just get Ms. T Bone to film it, and I know how it goes back together. Sorta, of, most of the time, maybe. scared to get dirty put you some gloves on don't be afraid don't be scared don't be scared you're gonna be okay this takes forever ain't it tap tap let's see what this rod looks like that's not terrible clean it off with a good clean dirty rag it's got a little bit of markings in there but not bad all right the way you know if you got a bad groove around your cylinder wall you can obviously feel it but when you go to push this piston out it'll them rings will catch that and won't want to come out let's see if, well, if I can get it popped loose off the crankshaft see how easy that popped out sweet now next thing we're gonna look at ring gap take it off and we'll sit it right back down in here now, I don't have the new rings out yet. Holy guacamole to gap. See that gap right there? Uh, that's why it's burning oil, folks. Those things, I don't know the correct tolerances, but you should barely even be able to see a crack there is all. So, we all stand by a little bit. I'm going to uh, get some parts cleaned up and gaskets cleaned. I'll get back with you. We'll show you how to put this thing together. Folks, just a quick note. All of these numbers and stuff down here in, in letters, uh, those letters and these and this serial number, those are the numbers you're going to need to look up the correct parts. And I do recommend only 
OEM parts for this engine or any Honda engine for that matter. Alright, just take a little oil. We're gonna go inside here. This tool I'm fixing to show you, uh, it's an automotive tool, you know, like most of my stuff is. Um, Cause I don't have a dingleberry that, that'll fit this. So these are just stones and we're gonna put them on the drill. In reverse. Feels nice. All right, let me get all this cleaned up and I'll be right back with you. It looks much better. No ridge at all now. It's just smooth. A little bit of discoloration there, but I didn't want to go too much on this thing. Okay, I was asked before to show the difference in the ring gap. Just to give you an idea, this is a small screwdriver, but it'll just slide right in between there. All right, y'all stand by and we'll pop the new rings in and show you the difference. And our new ring, again, same little screwdriver. Now you see the difference? Okay, let's see if we can put it together. So, first thing we're gonna do to get this piston off, what you wanna take note of, the dot is right there. What we're gonna do is just keep it laying the same way. Keep your finger over it because those will go ping across the shop. I'm going to flip it and this should push right out. Maybe. And let's get our other side loose. I just heard it ping across the shop. Stand by. Okay, luckily she found it. Mrs. T saves the day again. Didn't you, Mrs. T? Yep. <laughs> so we're gonna push this on out. Okay, I flipped on you, okay? So let's just go back. I got dot down, long end out, because this piston's going in this way. Pull your wrist pin out, okay? Laying down like that when the piston goes this way. I'm gonna show you some differences in a second. Dot down, same deal. Now we need some oil on here first. Let me get some oil. Doesn't matter what kind, just use something. You don't want to put them together dry. Nice and smooth. Dot down, hangy down. There we go. Oh, let's get a little oil in there, Rod. Y'all supposed to be telling me stuff like this. Mrs. T standing right here, she should be telling me what to do. Shouldn't you, honey? I can't tell you everything. Yes, dear. <laughs> Y'all know the secret to a successful marriage is two words. Yes, dear. That's all you need to know, and you'll be okay. It works both ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see if Rayleigh cannot kick this thing across the doggone shop again. But I can about promise you my wife will find it quickly. Okay. Well, luckily that one only flew 10 feet away and not all the way across the shop. <laughs> or under some bench that we find two years later. <laughs> I'm just clipping these back in. Be sure that those little rings are seated up inside. And they are. Something I noticed and I called our supplier. If you'll look. This piston, is that new piston, is actually taller. Look at that skirt right there. And I'm like, when I looked at it, I evened up the skirt, and I'm like, the new piston is taller. Well, what I discovered was if you line up the wrist pins, can y'all see down in that hole there? If you line up the wrist pins, the top of the piston's even. The difference is on these skirts are longer on this new piston. So at this point, I'm still praying they're going to work. We're about to find out. Now, we need to put some rings on. You're going to have a copper looking or a silver looking. And there'll be a letter or a dot that goes 
toward the head, not down toward the crankshaft. That's your compression ring, and somebody's going to say something about what I call these. This is your oil scraper ring, and then this little three-piece set with the little thin rings, that is an oil carrier set. Okay, y'all got, y'all with me? All right, here we go. Now, what I want to do, these piston ring gaps, I like to offset them. All right, we know that this is gonna be down like this. So I'm gonna put on this three piece set, a gap here and a gap here. The other two rings, I'm gonna put a gap here and a gap here. One on the uh, compression ring and one on the scraper ring. And the reason being that way they're staggered. You want them staggered around is what you're looking for. So take your time with them. And the other thing they say, don't line them up over the wrist pins. So, and these here take a little finagling. It's fiddly, as some people say. What is that beating and bamming around out there, huh? I can't see from here. Don't they know we in here trying to film? Okay, so. Start with your wavy one actually to work better. And just work these around. And I'm gonna work these over to the proper position here. And just take your time fooling with them. Okay. Now next. It's going to be our scraper ring. If I can find the doggone letter. There it is. All right, we're going to position it about here. And then our compression ring. Is my letter up? hard to see when you get old folks and snap a rooney there we go position these over just below okay something like that all right, let me wipe some of this dirt off my hands. Y'all hang on a minute. A little oil there. We're going to do a little oil in the cylinder. So if y'all watched that video on that GX160 that we pretty much did the same thing we're doing to this one. I had an automotive piston ring compressor and we fought and fought and fought. Y'all have got to go check out the in outtakes at the end of that doggone thing. Holy moly, we caught the devil with that rascal. Uh, so I was like, I've got to find me a good one. Somebody made a comment, a good friend of ours. Anyhow, so I ended up talking to KB's small engine. Hey, Kyle. Um, and took his recommendation and he said get this little Brigham Stratton one so I did and this is actually going to be the first time it's used so we're going to see if we like it or not Kyle hope you're doing okay buddy y'all got to go watch the outtakes how many times it took it like seven times to get that piston in I hope I don't jinx myself now talking about that and can't get this one in. Y'all start calling me can't get right. Something. And we just tighten those down.
tell if the doggone thing's tight or not. Let's give it a whack a rooney see if it pops in the hole. Look at there. Thanks, Beautiful. Kyle. So we So B E A Beautiful. Let's put a little oil up on this crankshaft journal. Oh my rags! I fell on the dog on floor. Somebody's gonna be fussing about my squeaky chair. I need a rod cap. It needs oil. Actually, I think this is bar and chain oil in this thing. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It just mated those two up. Remember your dipper has to be down so that it's slinging oil everywhere for on your engine. And we'll find our two bolts. Run these in. We'll run the hand here. Terrell, Terrell fixes all is doing today. He's probably fixing on something too. I bet, bet old Kyle over at KB Small Engines fixing on something. My fingers are all slippery and I can't put the bolts up there. All right, so we're torquing these at 10 foot pounds right 10,000 foot pounds just tighten them down till your daggum elbow falls off oh. All right. let's see and the other oh, you it's, got it. it's laying over oh, there okay. outside yeah I'm just gonna run these on up Right before I torque them, what I'm gonna do, I just wanna make sure these seat up there real good. And then we're gonna spin this over, make sure nothing's clanking, clicking, hitting, farting, whatever. I can barely hold a doggone ratchet, my fingers are so early. Well, let's see if we got it right or not. Pull it around where you guys can see. Let's do it this way with a squeaky starter rope that's never been used. Now there's a piston coming up right. Beautiful. Alright, let's go around a little further. What's squeaking now is this old starter over here. Nobody has ever tried to pull that before. I was the first one. Okay, what did you say? 10 foot pounds? Mm-hmm. Let's click on up. That was it right there. And normally, I don't ever even worry about this too much. I just tighten them down, folks. But y'all listen for my elbow to crack. There it was. Okay. Y'all stand by a second. Okay. This is a counterbalancer thingy ma bob mini crankshaft. I don't care what you call it. Just call it put it in the engine. Um, you got to line this up like a camshaft, guys. Now, this is going to be very difficult to see. I'm going to show you. There's a dot right there. Can you see the dot on the top of that? Right by my thumb. I'm trying to shine a little flashlight there. See that little dot right there? And then we're going over here to the, the the big gear. See the dot right in front of my finger there? Let's see if I can do this. And it is small, folks. See it right there? Yeah. So that's how we're going to line this gear up. If I can even see to get the doggone thing in here.
Oh, that's off two teeth. Try it again. Okay. Now we should be lined up. Are we lined up there? Oops, we don't want flashy light. Looks like our two dots are lined up. Maybe I'm getting too much reflection there. Okay, those two are lined up. Now, the smaller gear, you can see, look for our dot. There's our dot on our camshaft gear. Right there. Oh, that light just isn't helping, is it? See the little dot right there? I'm going to go line it up on the cam. Now, just so you all know, you call on these lifters or tappets or whatever. When we go to put the push rods in, for those that don't know, these push rods are going in through the head, and you're, what you're aiming for is to get right in the top of this, okay? So we'll get to these in a minute. Let's get our push rods put up in there. Sometimes they'll stay, sometimes they'll fall out. And if they fall out, just tip your engine over to where they'll stay in position. You can put a dab of grease, just a little tiny bit of grease, so it'll wash off and use that. That'll kind of help stick them. This bar and chain oil is pretty sticky and thick, so it usually holds them in there pretty decent. Okay, let's see if we can crank this around and get our camelator gear. And what I do is I kind of line up the dot sort of close to where it's going in, and that kind of gets you, makes it a little easier for you. Now, they made a big dot there, so... Let's put us a little bit of lube on this. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. That's right. Third time's charm. All right, are we lined up there? All right, folks, are we lined up? Y'all see the two dots? Looks like they're lined up to me. When uh, something else, take you some very, very fine sandpaper, some emery cloth. You'll want to clean this crankshaft up good as you possibly can because uh, that way you're not taking a chance on rolling the seal or any of that kind of stuff. So give me a second and I'm going to set us up and we're going to talk about the uh, crankshaft output seal. Oh, hey, I was waiting on y'all. Okay, let's talk about this. We're going to put a seal in here. I want to take note around this edge. It's got a little bevel right by my dirty old fingernail there. It's that little bevel. And take note of how far that seal is pushed in. Remember that, y'all, okay? Because we put the new one in, we want to get the same position because most of the time, there's an oil journal in here somewhere. So... Find your little place, prop it up, get your seal remover, and bop it till it's removed. Did it bop out yet? I keep missing. You know me, sometimes I get a hammer, I break stuff. Well, it's almost out. It doesn't want to come out, y'all. It is like in there. Where's my plastic gear? I don't want to break it. It's in there. What are we going to do, y'all? See, it's bending it, trying to push it. You have a seal puller somewhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> are you kidding me? This is a shop. Without tools. There we go. <laughs> Can we reuse that? Maybe. <laughs> it Not. might leak. <laughs> okay. Fling it across the shop. Let's wipe this out a little bit. Golly, that thing was in there. Yeah, this one's got a whole groove all the way around. Like there. What in my little uh, 
clean this up just a little bit. I want it nice and smooth. I should have told y'all at the beginning you was going to need popcorn. This thing's going to be so long. Look down in there. I see something. There's something there moving. You know what that is? That is the string for the seal. We don't want to leave that in there. Put that on your screen door or something. Well, it used to be round. <laughs> okay, so. Now, we don't want to be bopping and break this. So, what we're going to do. Get this old board. Lay a board up here and make sure we're protected. And don't smash that gear. These seals already come with grease in them when you get an OEM Honda. Can you believe that? So, what I'm going to do is start it with the hammer. I hope it goes in easier than it came out. And I got a socket that I ground down to fit something one day. I think that's actually on a video or something. And see, I'm, it, even though the socket isn't big enough, I'm going toward the outer edge and hitting the outer edge as I do this. And just a little bit around, work my way all the way around. Take your time with it. believe we're there nice little edge around there sweet don't go grinding on these things you see that ridge around this edge where your gasket seats you don't want to grind that off I used a wire brush to get this one cleaned up the side here is smooth and make sure you got your little locators in right there slip your gasket on and we want to put a little lube on this stuff. A little bit on the gears. So, let's see if I can find me another dirty rag to wipe my hands with. And when this cover doesn't want to go all the way up, it's probably because this gear is not lined up yet. And what you do is just take kind of crank it over a little bit to get it to push on up in there. Now when we do this, we want to be careful we don't do what they call roll the seal and your spring pops out like that other one, right? So we're going to slip it up here. Now bear with me, let me slip this around. seal didn't roll. That's good. Alright, let's get some bolts. Like I said before, 12, a 14, and a 10, you can just about do anything on one of these. It's pretty easy. kind of go in a cross pattern you can look up exactly what theirs is or don't I don't care Alright folks 
and I just know how tight that thing goes. So it's gonna be fine, you guys. All right, our next thing we're gonna start with, we're gonna go over and talk about this head and uh, see about doing us a valve job. Y'all stand by. All right, let's see about doing these valves. What we're gonna do is reseat these things. You can see that's cleaned up much better than it was. Now I'm gonna take this socket and lay it right there, basically. You know, well, it fell over. All that's gonna do is kind of hold that valve. You really don't need a, a tool. Push down. These are a little stouter than the little GX160. You see it seats in the center and you just push it off to the side and they come out. So we're gonna set this valve or spring and keep her right there. Now this being our intake side, what we're gonna look for is the valve stem seal, which is sitting right there. We're gonna replace that. So before we do, we're gonna take and show you how to reseat these valves. Now these, I'm, I feel confident are fine. You can see a good groove around there. They're pretty clean. So I'm just, this is just to show you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and do both valves. Everybody's got their way. They've got the little suction tool that you do with your hand like this, back and forth and all that. This way, you don't have to have any special tool. Just a little piece of uh, fuel line for vacuum hose. You can get it at the parts store if you don't have some. Take your valve down there and say, I need something to fit this. Now, you don't need a suction tool. You can just sit there and spin it back and forth, okay? Or do it the same way. Or, you know me, it's gonna be different. Put it on your drill. All right. And then we're gonna go. Now I'm gonna reverse it and go the other way. Okay. Pop this out, pop that off, take this out, do that. And we're gonna make sure that you get every bit of this stuff cleaned off. And I'm gonna to spray this down with some brake cleaner real good. Uh, now let's talk about this seal. So I wonder if we can get that out. I'm gonna leave these on just like that, but we are gonna check the adjustment when this is over. Let's see if I can get a little something or other and pop those out. Or pop it out. Maybe it'll come right off of there. Just like that. There's our valve steam seal. And all we're gonna do, let's just put a new one on. Honda OEM, is it the same? Where did it go? Looks the same to me. Put some Earl on it. Do y'all know Earl? This is Earl. It's gonna be early anyway. And then you'll just take, you can just push it right down with your thumb. Give me a second, let me clean this up first. I wanna get all that compound out of there. Okay, got her all wiped off. Should be able to just push this down on there. Boop, right there in place. As you can see, beautiful line around there. So we know it's gonna seal good. And, you know, of course, we know this one did run. Let's hope it runs when I'm done with it, right? Let me put a little a Mr. Earl on there. You want to hold that seal, give it a little extra oomph as you slide through. Now that's on. Going to sit it back on our socket. That way the valve don't push through. Clean this off a little. I've already washed it all in the vat. Now we just got to press this back in position. Just like that. All right, y'all stand by and we'll do this other side and we're going to move on. Okay. First off, these little locators, I'm going to stick them up there. And they are machine tight. 
head gasket, like I said, OEM, and all those little keepers do. I'm gonna make sure that your holes are all lined up properly. And we'll take our head, make sure it's nice and clean, everything looks pretty, and it goes like this. Let me see if I can get it on here. Put my plug wire in the way. Look at there. Start our head bolt. It's not down on the back. Not down on the back? Mm -mm. Why not? You got it on there crooked. Oh, crap a doodle. <laughs> there it is. Is that better? That's better. Okay. I gotta keep it straight. I don't know. I don't know. What you gonna do? And just running them down, running them down. Y'all remember I never did even loosen those, did I? Get out your Torquilator 6000, set it to 25 foot pound. Click, click, click. Do it again. When you get done with your torque wrench, back it all the way off folks you don't want to leave that tension on that spring that's why this one's lasting me for 35 years okay let's get our um, fish rods in we know there's oil on the top of those lifters put those in and make sure that they fall in on top of those lifters tap it you call them what you want to i call them what i want to got that one in See if I can get it on here. Let me just loosen the doggone thing. The little engines, I can push them down. This one, they won't let you. Lock nut. Back this off. Get yourself enough right there. Just run it back down. Back that off. Make sure we're in our lifter. That one fell right in. Come on. Golly. There we go. Okay. And I just got these kind of snugged up there. We're going to pull it over. Let's see if... Everything opens and closes like it's supposed to. All right, let's get this valve open. Okay, there's our exhaust is open. So what does that tell us? We know that this one is closed intake six that's their intake six thousandths get in there till you get your little drag and you use the big nut to adjust and your little nut is your uh, locker and sometimes it takes more than once folks so be patient with it don't go throwing tools across the shop. See, too tight. So what we do? We do it one more again. I don't understand. 
Ugh. See, y'all thought I did everything perfect the first time, right? Wrong. Is that six million thousandths? Yeah. Patience, people. Patience. All right. Y'all stand by a second. Okay. We had to do that about three more times to get it to, to do correctly. I don't know why, but that's what it took. All right. Intake is open. Exhaust is loose. We're going to eight thousandths. All right, there's about snug. So I'm going to back off this time as I do this a little bit. And I pulled the rocker and all off there. Nothing's out of place or anything there. That one's doing it too. Don't know what I'm doing. Maybe somebody knows. You know, I bet my wrench was hitting the rocker. Maybe that's what did it. Oh, there, sweet. That's a little too tight yet. Over and over again. Which one's eight? That one's eight. Sweet. Okie dokie. Now you want to rotate the engine over, double check them again, make sure. There's that one open. Let's double check. Nice drag. There's your other one. Back to eight. Too tight. Let's do it again. Told you he's going to need popcorn for this video, right? Bag it off again. What is, there it is. Golly. Okay. I think we're right now. Okay. Let me get a few more pieces together here and I'll show you how to put some more stuff back on this thing. All right, let's do some valve coverage. New valve cover gasket. I'm going to squirt a little oil in here because I can. And I know it's probably going to smoke anyway when I first fire it up. But that's okay because we know it ain't going to do what it used to do. You want to know what the torque spec is on this? About like that. All right, folks, let's see if we can hook some more stuff up. Spacer, be sure it's lined up the correct way. Holes. These gaskets look excellent. Nothing wrong with them. Slide that on. Slide this fuel atomizer box back on there you go and our next thing oh i'll tell you what i forgot let's hook up some throttle what do y'all think now i do see something that is broken here this spring is broken so i'm gonna have to get one of those and fix it but it's not the end of the world so we can still finish the video and make it run Got our throttle plate. Do y'all remember what hole I told you to look at on the governor? I do, because I took it off. So like I said, just take a picture of the stuff. You do it, let's get our wires routed like they're supposed to be. Carburetor pushed up. 
this right here, that right there. These screws are all pretty much the same length except for one. All of them are short ones except for one. That long one goes with the plastic air cleaner box up here. So that's all it is to it. Couple little screws. This one's a little tight because I didn't even take the starter cover off. fell out earlier that goes right there you pull these covers off some of these have a choke up here this one has got a cable because it's on that side by side but pull them both back that way they'll slide right in through here and then you want to make sure you hook up your crankcase breather two nuts well if I can get it started Maybe. Don't crank them, crank them down, y'all. The long bolt I was telling you about right there. Okay, folks, all we need is one of them. Brand new NGK spark lighter. Is it gapped correctly, y'all? Yep. I can look at it and tell you. Let me prove it. Look at there. Perfect. Yeah, I need a spark plug socket. I can find it. What'd y'all do with it? Oh, there's Shock Kitty. Oh, Jose's over there talking to us. Oh, boy. Jose. Come say hey to everybody, Jose. It's right here. And the muffler's still off. We had that off to get it out of the machine. Y'all stick around and listen to a little tune. And we're going to uh, put some oil in this thing and put it back in the machine. And, uh, we're going to fire this thing up and see if it actually runs. You talking to mommy? Say hey to mommy. Well, folks, we got her all back together, and I just took her for a test drive. She runs really good here. Let's let's fire this thing up. She's purring like a kitten. No more smoke. We appreciate you watching. Hope somebody will learn something, maybe a little tip or trick. Uh, if you get into one of these Hondas, 
uh, we learned a thing or two also. So y'all click that subscribe button. Give us one of those thumbs up. Ring that bell so you'll get notifications when we post new videos. We'll see you folks next time. Thank you.